A ghastly discovery in their Ohio home. Me and my wife were just on a dead body in our freezer. What did we just hear? In the frosty depths of the freezer, amidst the chilling hum, they discovered not frozen delights, but a dead body. What whispered of secrets long preserved in icy silence? Call 911, what is your emergency? Hey, uh, my name is Kevin. I live in Camel, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> Me and my wife, we just found a dead body in our freezer. Dead body? Yeah. Alright, it's okay, sir. Is it a male? Is it a female? I, I think it's a female. I need a camel please here right away. We just listened to a terrifying 911 call, which was made on July 29, 2017. Before delving into the details of this call, let's address the essential elements. What, when, where, why, and who? Let us take you back to June 22, 2017, from where it all started. In June of 2017, the Youngstown Police Department gets a call of a missing adult. A missing adult? Yeah, right. You just heard that. Youngstown Police Department received a call regarding a missing adult, initiating the beginning of a compelling story. The question arises, who was the missing person? Shannon Graves was last seen by her family around February of 2017, but and the missing persons report wasn't filed until June. So something was wrong, something was off. As we move ahead, the detectives started searching for clues in Shannon Graves' disappearance, and they make a surprising discovery. We discovered that in April of 2017, the Youngstown Police Department towed Shannon's car, and we had actually had it in our impound lot. Shannon's car was being driven by her boyfriend, Arturo Novoa, and that Arturo Novoa committed a traffic violation. There was a police officer present tried to pull Artur Novoa over. Artur Novoa flees. He ditches Shannon's car, gets out of the car and runs, and he's apprehended. Is that something else is going on here besides just a missing persons case? Why did Arturo run away from the cops when they told him to stop? It's important to know he was driving Shannon Graves' car, who happens to be his girlfriend. If he had her car, where was Shannon? As authorities try to contact Arturo Novoa, a suspect in Shannon's disappearance, he avoids them, ignoring his door and phone calls. Then, on July 3, 2017, 11 days after Shannon went missing, her ex-fiance, John Scarada, reached out to detectives. He came forth with some information in that Arturo also had a, another girlfriend. We learned that Arturo was dating on and off again for many years, Katrina Layton. And we learned that she was in the picture the same time that Shannon Graves was in the picture. It was your stereotypical love triangle. Shannon Graves, Arturo Novoa, and Katrina Layton. The tale unfolds with Shannon Elizabeth Graves entering the world on November 4, 1988 as the beloved daughter of Christine Graves and Ronnie DePaul. Within the family, she held a special place as the older sibling, but her affection for her brother AJ was unmatched and unconditional. Their bond was not just that of blood, but a connection woven with love and shared adventures. Among her friends, Shannon was affectionately known as Star, a nickname that captured her radiant personality. Moreover, she was always willing to go to great lengths to help her friends in times of need. Apart from her human connections, Shannon had a deep bond with her puppy, spending countless hours in his company. Their companionship a source of joy and a comfort in her life. Between 2014 and 2016, Shannon was in a relationship with a man named John Scarada and even got engaged. John had a roofing business, but also a criminal history as a drug dealer. He and Shannon parted ways while he was in prison. The exact details of their breakup remained undisclosed, but according to those who knew him, John still harbored feelings for her. In 2016, Shannon achieved a significant milestone by obtaining her cosmetology license from Raphael's School of Beauty in Boardman. 
Filled with enthusiasm, she looked forward to embarking on a new career in the beauty industry. During that year, she crossed paths with a man named Arturo Novoa, and their connection quickly evolved into a romantic relationship. They decided to share a home at Mahoning Avenue in Youngstown, Ohio. However, their relationship soon took a dark turn when Novoa became abusive, leading to their breakup in December 2016. Novoa moved out of their shared apartment, but just a week later they reconciled and he was back living at Shannon's. Things were starting to look good for Shannon. However, everything was about to change. Six months later, on June 22, 2017, the Youngstown Police Department received a call from Shannon's half-sister, Debbie DePaul. Debbie reported Shannon missing, expressing her concern. While it was not uncommon for Shannon to go without contacting her family for extended periods, missing significant events like her birthday and Easter raised red flags for Debbie, prompting her to reach out to the authorities. Even when Shannon's father, Ronnie, contacted Navoa, he claimed that she had moved to Cleveland to be with another man. Furthermore, the family repeatedly attempted to contact Shannon on her phone, but were unsuccessful. By that time, the police were aware that solving the case would be challenging due to the delayed report. Nevertheless, the investigations into the case began in earnest, with authorities putting their full effort into unraveling the mystery. It didn't take the police much time to do a background check and find out that John and Shannon's breakup occurred while he was in prison, causing him distress as per those acquainted with him and Shannon. Adding to the suspicions, John had been released shortly before Shannon was believed to have disappeared. Detective Mike Lambert from the Youngstown Police Department believed that John had both motive and opportunity to do something to Shannon. However, John informed the police that he hadn't seen Shannon since February 2017. He claimed she told him she was giving her relationship with Navoa another chance, but he also admitted to still having romantic feelings for her during their conversation. Due to this, the police couldn't shake their suspicions about John, a person with a criminal past and potential motives. However, lacking concrete evidence, their hands were tied, leaving them unable to take further action. Despite the suspicions from police, John, along with Debbie, was actively assisting the police in their investigation, and soon law enforcement made an intriguing discovery. This finding led them to identify their second potential suspect in the case. We discovered that in April of 2017, the Youngstown Police Department towed Shannon's car, and we had actually had it in our impound lot. Shannon's car was being driven by her boyfriend, Arturo Novoa, and that Arturo Novoa committed a traffic violation. There was a police officer present, tried to pull Arturo Novoa over. Arturo Novoa flees. He ditches Shannon's car gets out of the car and runs, and he's apprehended. Shannon's car is then towed to the impound lot and remained there. Arturo got a couple of tickets and was released on the scene. The police conducted a search of the vehicle, hoping to find clues about Shannon's disappearance. But what they discovered would completely alter their initial perspective on the case. We found a series of cardboard box tops and we were able to determine that they had contained bottles of drain cleaner which was mainly sulfuric acid. That kind of elevates our suspicions that something else is going on here besides just a missing persons case. At this point Arturo Novoa became the main focus of the investigation but the question remained was he really behind the disappearance or was there more to the story? To find out, the police knew they had to dig deeper into the case, and they knew that the case was about to get much more twisted. The police made numerous attempts to contact Navoa, but he never responded or opened the door to his apartment. Faced with his silence, investigators turned to people who knew Shannon for information. They sought to uncover whether there were any suspicious circumstances surrounding Navoa, and if there were issues in his relationship with Shannon and they did get some responses that would pique their interest. Shannon and Arturo were toxic. 
with each other. And I know that he's put his hands on her. She was tired of it. She wanted to get away. She wanted to move on and have a better life. Eleven days after Shannon was reported missing on July 3, 2017, the police received a call from the first suspect and Shannon's ex-fiance, John. John told us that Arturo and Shannon had broken up and that Arturo was upset about the breakup. However, that wasn't the end of it. He had more to reveal. He came forth with some information in that Arturo also had a, another girlfriend. We learned that Arturo was dating on and off again for many years, Katrina Layton. And we learned that she was in the picture the same time that Shannon Graves was in the picture. It was your stereotypical love triangle of individuals. So naturally, we have to look at her as a strong person of interest. Now, three people were in focus. John Scarata, Arturo Novoa, and his girlfriend, Katrina Layton. Now all police needed to do was to find them and ask what was going on. As the search efforts persisted, John had significant new information to disclose to the police, and this time, it was a major revelation. John reported that a few known individuals had observed Arturo Novoa burning some of Shannon's items in a fire pit on the south side of Youngstown. In fact, another party helped him burn these items in the person of Andrew Herman. Suddenly, the focus shifted from three individuals to four suspects in the investigation. This time, Andrew Herman also made the list. Information was scattered in all directions the puzzle pieces lying disjointed. Assembling them was proving to be a complicated challenge, but the investigators needed one crucial piece to unravel the case entirely. However, the case was just about to take the most horrific turn. And this moment came when the police received a chilling 911 call on July 29, 2017 at 5.05 p.m. Yeah, my name is Ken. I live in Camel, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> Me and my wife were just on a dead body in the freezer. Dead body? Freezer yeah. All right, it's okay. So, is it a male? Is it a female? I, I think it's a female. I need a camel police here right away. The scene was horrifying, and Ken and Jill Eschenbach, the couple who discovered the remains of an unidentified woman in their freezer, were left in utter shock. They were absolutely horrified. They just couldn't believe what they saw in that freezer. Me and my wife just screamed and we came up and I went to the front steps. When Dan Caceres, the lead prosecutor with the Ohio Attorney General's office, spoke to the couple, a chilling tale unraveled. Jill told the police that she was planning to retrieve meat for dinner from a freezer belonging to a friend of her husband's. She explained that she was looking for ground beef to make meatballs when she was startled to find a padlock on her husband's friend's freezer. Using a screwdriver, she managed to open the lock, discovering stacks of black bags and a bucket inside, emanating a horrible smell. Alarmed, she asked her husband to investigate further. Upon opening one of the bags, he was horrified to find what appeared to be a human foot. When they looked closely inside the bags, they found the dismembered body of a woman wrapped in garbage bags, with the head missing. Now the question arose, who did the freezer belong to, and why did they have it? He said, my electricity's off. Can I put my freezer in your basement? All right. Yeah. All right. It's okay, sir. Now the answer to the question of whose freezer it was was quite unpredictable. But before revealing the person, was it actually Shannon's remains? Upon examining the body parts, the police made a significant discovery. One of the feet bore a scorpion tattoo, just like Shannon. The evidence was unmistakable. It was indeed Shannon's body in the freezer. Nevertheless, the police required a definitive confirmation. The remains were sent to the coroner's office, but due to the absence of the victim's head, the cause of death could not be determined. 
Despite this, the authorities were able to confirm Shannon's identity through her fingerprints. However, the police were now faced with the daunting task of unraveling the mystery of how she ended up there and when it happened. In my deepest, darkest nightmares did I ever fathom this occurring. During separate interrogations, the Ashenbaugh's maintained consistent accounts, leading investigators to rule them out as suspects. However, a new individual came into focus, a man named Anthony Gonzalez, reportedly the person responsible for delivering the freezer to the Ashenbaugh's residence. Now, once again, another person emerged as a suspect in the unfolding investigation. While some aspects of the case were becoming clearer, simultaneously, the emerging details were also making it increasingly complex to pinpoint the killer. Investigators initiated a search for information regarding the new suspect, Anthony Gonzalez. And soon, Anthony was in the interview room with the police. Intriguingly, it didn't take long for the police to discover something that would change the whole course of the case. So what is this about? Development. And they find out that Anthony Gonzalez is actually an alias. I know you go by Anthony, but for the purpose of this, we want to use your cop name. Anthony Gonzalez is actually Arturo Novoa. He's Shannon Graves' boyfriend. It's a shock to everyone. Did you, at any point, take a freezer to a house in Camel? I did not. So you didn't go to Kenny Eschenbaugh's house on Devitt with a freezer, with a padlock on it, and put it in his basement? I did not. And he is actually sitting in our interview room with the keys to the padlock. Those are things we can demonstrate right there that you're lying to us. Now I have people that know you saying you brought a freezer to our house. When they opened it up, guess what they found? What did they find, sir? Why do you think you're here? The charge is abuse of a corpse. Excuse me? Abuse of a corpse. Are you being serious right now? I'm not fooling with you, man. Additionally, investigators learned that Navoa was now in a relationship with Katrina Layton, with whom he had moved in just two weeks after the last confirmed sighting of Shannon. What made the situation even more unsettling was that they had moved into none other than Shannon's own apartment. At that time, there was a lot of pressure for us to go into that apartment. When we would go there, knock on the doors, the dog would bark, so we knew the dog was in there. But nobody would ever answer the door. Katrina's car was parked there, and it just so happened that it had been parked on the street for so long and the plates were expired that we ended up towing that car. That is what triggered Katrina to come to us for our initial interview. It was now time to have an extensive conversation with the two prime suspects, Arturo Novoa and Katrina Layton. At the same time, the officers had a few questions for another person of interest, Andrew Herman. The police managed to locate Andrew and his girlfriend, Michelle Illenfield, conducting an interview with them. However, the specific details of this interview were kept undisclosed for the time being. Rest assured, we will reveal the complete story behind this notorious crime soon enough. Now, let's jump straight into the interview with Katrina Layton. So listen, while I got you here, one of the reasons we've been knocking on doors down there okay. is because we're looking for Shannon. Oh, yeah, I've heard something about that. I haven't really been following it all too closely. We knew that she was living there. She had nothing to really add to the story about where Shannon might be. When you moved in with Anthony, was her stuff still there? No, I don't remember seeing anything. Maybe her dog was there. Yeah, her dog was there. In her car. If she left her car, then how did she get in there? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, supposedly, I mean, from what I've heard, she left with some guy. Katrina gave us basic story that, yeah, Shannon is Arturo's ex-girlfriend. She moved away with some other guy. What we later found out was a really bitter rivalry for this man. At this point, it was becoming clear that the case was centered around a twisted love triangle. What I could tell you about Arturo was... He dated Katrina on and off for about eight years. That included before and after Shannon's disappearance and death. Now, the police were determined to dig deeper into the relationships, aiming to uncover crucial clues from Katrina's statements that could provide vital insights into the case. She was extremely jealous, and they say she hated this new, really pretty girlfriend of his. Arturo Novoa, while he was living with Shannon Graves, 
repeatedly had sexual intercourse with Katrina Layton. Katrina is completely obsessed with Arturo Novoa to the extent that she would wait five hours in a motor vehicle in January in 15 degree weather, waiting to perform sexual acts on Arturo Novoa in a car. Such was Katrina's obsession that made it her involvement in this horrifying act plausible. The police, considering this possibility, now sought to extract a confession from her. They began systematically presenting the evidence they had, step by step. So she leaves her car, she leaves her dog, she leaves his phone, and no, the phone Anthony's... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Not new girlfriend, but old girlfriend who's now back, is now using the phone that I got Shannon you. was using. Yeah. And so it looks weird. Simultaneously, while Katrina was being interviewed, the police had Navoa in another room, ready to gather information from him. It was now time to confront him. You have no idea what became of her? Where I she ended up? I do not. I have said this to everybody. However, Navoa was not going to give in so easily. In the meantime, the police worked to gather any available information about the two suspects and they did find some crucial details that shed light on the characters of both Katrina and Navoa. What was interesting was we found out later that that wasn't it for Arturo. He was using other women, too, that Katrina didn't know about. We've got evidence in his computer that he was involved with at least three other women that he sexting pictures with. Having learned this about Navoa, they also uncovered further information regarding Katrina. Katrina Layton is a mom with two kids. She was absolutely in love with Arturo Novoa. She was crazy about him. People described her as his on-again, off-again girlfriend. That when he couldn't have somebody that he really wanted, that Katrina was his fallback. The police were quite sure by then that Katrina hated Shannon and had something to do with the murder, too. However, she was yet to break down. Maybe she got rid of her. Do you see how tiny I am? <laughs> really? <laughs> but sooner or later, the police believed Katrina's resolve would crumble. Their attention was primarily on her, although they from time to time gave her a break and spoke with Navoa. They understood that extracting a confession was becoming increasingly complex, although Katrina's statements were gradually becoming inconsistent and unreliable. There's been some developments. All right, so let me know what's going on. Why do you keep saying a body in a freezer? Because there's a body in a freezer. What do you mean there's a body in a freezer? In what freezer? The freezer that you guys bought. You know, I told you about ten times that the missing girl is dead in your freezer. I'm looking for some kind of reaction. I, 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 because You don't I'm, look shocked at all. Yeah. No, it's not that. I'm just uh, trying to process everything. Finally, when she became certain that the police were aware of the freezer being in her apartment, she admitted to buying it. Let me ask you something. Forget all this. Did you kill her? Hell no. Were you there when she was killed? No. Okay. What? Well, sure looks like you did. No, what do you mean it looks like I did? She's in your freezer. The one you paid for. So it kind of looks like you killed her. She was banging your band. You hated her. And you are in possession of all Whoa. her early goods. So it kind of looks like you killed her. Okay, it looks like I killed her. Her frustration was evident, and it wouldn't be long before she began mentioning things she shouldn't. She thought she could outsmart us. She was almost as good as Arturo, except that she had a need to try to explain things, and in doing so, she let little things slip. You guys are sitting here telling me that there's anybody in this freezer that I did not bring to Kenny's house. And that's when the interview went upside down for her. You said anything about Kenny's house. You just told me it was in Kenny's basement. I mean, I'm we assuming... We never said anything about a basement. Well... We never said anything Kenny's... about that. Okay. We never told you that. Let's stay small. Girl in the freezer. What do we know about that? I, I get that. How'd the you end up in your freezer? The problem is, is I don't know. Katrina was living in Shannon's house. She was driving Shannon's car. And she was looking after Shannon's dog. Yet she claimed to know nothing about Shannon's whereabouts. Such contradictions would easily raise suspicions for anyone. The woman who's screwing your boyfriend disappears, and you basically slide right, slide in. right into her life with her dog. And you don't know. 
about it, and it's a coincidence that she ended up in your freezer. I didn't know that she disappeared. I thought she left. Well, she reappeared today. I thought so. they, I thought they broke up and she left with somebody because that's what he said. As the interview reached a temporary halt with no confessions in sight, the police intensified their evidence collection efforts. During this whole case, Shannon's ex-fiance, John, emerged as a crucial informant. As mentioned earlier in the video, he had informed police about Novoa burning items in a fire pit, and later a partially burned bracelet engraved with Shannon's name was discovered where the items had been burned. This revelation strongly suggested Novoa's attempt to destroy Shannon's belongings, possibly to eliminate evidence. To validate this claim, the police decided to approach a man named Steve, whose house served as the location for the bonfire. Investigators interviewed Steve, and he recounted that on March 1, 2017, Navoa had requested permission for a bonfire at his house, a request Steve agreed to. Navoa, along with Andrew Herman, brought Shannon's belongings to throw into the fire. Steve revealed that Navoa had told him about Shannon's supposed betrayal, which was the motivation behind burning her belongings. Police intensified their investigation and reached out to Michelle Illenfeld, who was Herman's girlfriend. She revealed to police that both Navoa and Katrina had killed Shannon, and it was Herman who had dismembered her. According to Michelle, Katrina's jealousy over Shannon's relationship with Navoa had fueled the crime. It became evident that the entire group of friends had collaborated to conceal Shannon's murder. The police didn't waste much time, and with all the evidence in hand, on September 17, 2017, Navoa was arrested and charged with one count of aggravated murder, one count of murder, 24 counts of tampering with evidence, obstruction of justice, and six counts of abuse of a corpse, along with three counts of possession of criminal tools, three counts of theft of WIC benefits, one count of grand theft auto, and four counts of marijuana trafficking. However, Navoa pleaded not guilty. However, on August 8, 2018, the police decided to confront Katrina Layton once more. They reached out to her, offering a deal that guaranteed leniency, no jail time and probation if she cooperated. Remarkably, the offer proved effective, prompting Katrina to come forward with information. Well, I had got a phone call from... Okay. Yeah, he was crying. I remember that he was he was upset. Tell him to come to the house. I didn't okay. really know what the hell was going on. I mean, he pulled into the back of the house and she was an inch long. And then what happens? He backed the car into the garage. I remember saying, "Well, you can't, you can't leave her in the trunk." At that point, I realized, you know, I couldn't, I I couldn't lift her. I was already freaking out, you know, and that's when I called Andrew. Katrina revealed that Andrew Herman helped Arturo dismember Shannon. It does give us something to talk to Andrew about. The only difference is now we're confronting him with what Katrina told us about him actually participating in the dismemberment. Big difference between burning someone's things and cutting them apart. Following this, on December 18, 2018, the police arrested Andrew Herman for tampering with evidence and abuse of a corpse. However, prosecutor Dan Caceres struck a deal with Herman in exchange for testimony about the murder. We proffered him. We met him. As I told his lawyer, I said, look, if Andrew wants to be cooperative, he needs to do it. Otherwise, he's in a world of hurt. So what happened? Okay. He asked me to come meet him. Sitting me, no. What would you do? And I'd be over there. He told me to pick up a pair of garden stacks and open them up. I did. I had a bottle. Who was inside? Shit. I started freaking out on So I'm in face. All down. He then stated that together, they attempted to dissolve the remains using sulfuric acid. This story was consistent with the packages of sulfuric acid found in the car Navoa was initially driving. 
However, they lacked enough acid to dissolve more than her head, leading them to purchase a deep freezer to store the remaining remains. This account aligned with the details surrounding the freezer, fitting the pieces of the puzzle together at last. Now, all that remained was to confine these monsters behind bars. Following Herman's confession, Novoa agreed to a plea deal. In exchange for the dismissal of the aggravated murder charge, he pleaded guilty to all other charges leveled against him. On June 24, 2019, he was sentenced to a total of 48 years to life in prison at the age of 34. Subsequently, 29-year-old Andrew Herman also pleaded guilty to the charges against him, including treating a corpse with cruelty, engaging in a pattern of corrupt activity, and drug trafficking. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison in 2019. On the other hand, despite the initial deal made by Katrina Layton with the prosecution, which promised her no jail time and probation, new prosecutors took over the case and proved that Katrina was still in communication with Navoa while he was in prison. As a result, her original deal was revoked and she was ultimately sentenced to 18 years in prison, starting from June 2020. Michelle Illenfeld, Herman's girlfriend, was also charged with lying to a grand jury and intimidating a witness. She received a sentence of two and a half years in prison. Upon release, she would spend six months in a halfway house and serve five years of probation. On September 30, 2021, Navoa filed an appeal, arguing that his guilty plea should be deemed invalid because he was not informed that a judge could rule for the sentences of each count to be served consecutively. He further contended that the counts were not merged properly, leading to more convictions between them, which was not legally permissible. So, on October 1, 2021, the Supreme Court partially sided with Navoa. They upheld his guilty plea, but determined that the trial court had made an error in sentencing, stating that some counts were not merged properly. Consequently, Navoa's sentence was vacated and sent back to the state court for resentencing. In February 2022, Navoa was resentenced to 43 years to life in prison. The case was solved and closed, providing a sense of justice to Shannon's family and friends. But uh, what I don't understand is what she ever could have done to have these two people do what he did to her. I only got to bury part of a body. I knew it before I heard it. Uh, just everything around her being missing wasn't right. So we kind of didn't know the specifics or the gruesomeness of it, but figured pretty much something like that had happened. Yet nothing could bring back their dear Shannon. All that remained were cherished memories, a bittersweet reminder of the life she once lived. So, do you believe Shannon's murder was driven by jealousy? Or do you think there might have been other factors at play? And in your opinion, was the final verdict satisfactory? Let us know about your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any case in mind that you want us to cover, feel free to leave your suggestions at the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our channel, Mysterious Hook, to be the first to uncover these notorious cases from around the world. Until next time, stay safe.